Hi everyone, it's Joanne Tutoring here. Today we are going to be looking at the Grade 11 Math Curriculum in Ontario, Canada for geometric sequences. If you're not in Ontario, Canada, you can still watch this video. It's just, it's going to be more geared towards the curriculum in this particular province of Canada. But I hope it can help you regardless. Anyway, we're going to be starting off by looking at the definition of a geometric sequence and then the general formula for a geometric sequence. And then we're going to go through some examples. So let's get started. Okay, so a geometric sequence is an ordered list of numbers that increases or decreases by a common ratio. So I'm just going to write that out now. It is an ordered list of numbers that increases or decreases by a common ratio Okay, now that we've written out this definition, I'm just going to underline it. You can keep that in your notebook for your own reference if you'd like. Um, now I'm going to move on to the formula for a geometric sequence. So let's just say formula for a geometric sequence. And the general formula for a geometric sequence is Tn equals A R and R is to the power of n minus 1. Okay, so what do all of these um, letters in this formula mean? So we look at n here. n is the number of terms in the formula in the sequence, not in the formula, and in the formula is the number of terms in the sequence. Number of terms. Then if we look over here at r, r is the common ratio. And if we look over here at a, it's kind of hard to tell what's what because it's encircling some things, but if you look at A, A is the initial value, oops, initial value, or the first term in the sequence, in the sequence, and Tn, in this case, is the term number that we're looking for with the next term number. Okay, so term number n, right? So if we want to find T5, we could, you know, plug that into the formula and figure out what it is if we know what a and r are, right? Okay, so let's go through some examples now that we've established this. And hopefully if you're lost at this point, hopefully you aren't, but if you are, hopefully the examples will clear that up. Or if you are still lost, feel free to rewind and start from the beginning and hopefully things will start to make some more sense. Anyway, <laughs> again, I'm hoping you're not lost. Um, anyway, example one. So here we have this sequence that looks like this. It looks like 3, 12, 48, and 192. Okay, so our common ratio is 4. Common ratio is 4. So that means in our formula, r is 4. So 4 equals r. And the reason why our common ratio is 4 is because if we look at all of these numbers in our sequence, um, to get the next number, we are multiplying by 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. 
12 times 4 is 48, 48 times 4 is 92, and so on. And our first term in the sequence, easy enough to spot, um, our first term or initial value, let's call it the initial value, is 3. So if we were to fill in our formula, um, a would be equal to 3, right? So say I was going to continue to write out this sequence, this geometric sequence, and I want to find out what the 10th term would be. I want to find out what t10 is. What is this, right? Well, I can find this out by plugging it into the formula we wrote above. So I can say t10 equals a r n minus 1. Well, in this case, I know what a is. a is 3. And I know what r is. r is 4. I know that n is 10, right? So it'll be 10 minus 1. So if I simplify this a bit more, it's 3 times 4 to the power of 9. And then if I take my calculator, because my mental math skills are not good enough to do 4 to the power of 9 in my head, um, and then I multiply that by 3, I should get this really, really big number, which is 786,432. And that is what the 10th term in this sequence would be. Okay, so that is example one. Let's do another example. Okay, example two. All right, so in example two, I have a sequence, a geometric sequence that consists of the numbers 5, negative 10, 20, negative 40, and then it keeps going, and then I have the number 1,280. Okay, so looking here, I can determine that my, oops, that shouldn't be blue, it should be black, sorry. Um, but I can determine that my common ratio is negative 2, which means that negative 2 is equal to r. And that's because if I go through this geometric sequence, I am multiplying by negative 2 each time to get the next term. And there are some numbers in the middle here, so this is not times negative 2, but it'd be times negative 2 for each of these numbers, right? Okay. Anywho, my common ratio is negative 2. And then my initial value is 5, right? Which means that a is also 5. So say I wanted to find the term number for 1,280. I want to know um, how many um, terms I have to go to to arrive at this value. So I say I want to find the term number n for 1,280. Okay, how would I go about that? I know that 1,280 is going to be equal to some value using this formula, so I'm going to fill in what I know. So I know 1,280 is equal to 5 times negative 2 to some n, I don't know what the n value is, minus 1. Okay, so let's start off by dividing both sides by 5. When I do that, I get 256 on this side, and then the 5 on the right side would cancel. So I have negative 2 to the power of n on the right side. And then I can write 256 as an exponent, and when I do that, I get 2 to the power of 8. And then I, so I, get neg I can write this um, to the base of negative 2, so I get negative 2 to the power of 8. And then I can just keep the right side the same, negative 2 to the power of n minus 1. Then I can 
because they both have the same base, I can simplify this to say 8 is equal to n minus 1, and then I can add 1 to both sides and say that n is equal to 9. So that would be my final answer, and then I basically determined that the term number for 1280 is 9. Okay, let's see if we can go through one more example. Okay, so this would be example 3. So let's say that I know that the third term in a geometric sequence is 12, and the sixth term is negative 96, and I want to find, I want to find the ninth term. What is the value of the ninth term? Okay, so how am I going to go about finding this? I don't know what A is, and I don't know what the common ratio is. But let's see if we can work with what we have. So I know that 12 is equal to A, R, and then N in this case is 3, so 3 minus 1, right? So I know if I simplify this, I can say 12 is equal to A, R squared. Seems simple enough. And I also know that negative 96 is equal to a r 6, because 6 is n, minus 1. If I simplify that, I can say negative 96 is equal to a r to the power of 5, right? Okay, so now that I have these two equations, I can say negative 96 is equal to a r to the power of 5, and 12 is equal to a r squared. And then if I were to divide here, I could say that so negative 96 divided by 12 is negative 8. And then I um, can divide out on the other side. So when I do that, I get r cubed because a divided by a is going to be just 1. And then when you divide exponents, you subtract. So um, knowing this, I can say negative 8 is equal to r cubed. And then I can solve for r by taking the cube root of negative 8, which gives me negative 2 is equal to r. So this is our common ratio. So we know that part of the equation. Knowing this, we can sub into either one of our equations, um, either the one with 12 or the one with negative 96 to find a. I'm just going to use the one with 12 because I think it's easier, but you can use the other one. It would give you the same answer. So I have negative 2 to the power of 2. And then this would give me a times 4. 12, if I divide both sides by 4, I get that a is equal to 3. All right, so now I know what my initial value is. My initial value is... Three. Okay, so knowing this, and now I know r, now I know my initial value, now I can find the ninth term. Okay, so I can say t9 is equal to 3, negative 2, to the power of 9 minus 1, which is equal to, if I simplify a bit, 3 times negative 2 to the power of 8. And then I can say t9 is equal to negative 768. Okay, and that is the answer. And those are all the examples I'm going to go through in this video. If anything doesn't make sense, feel free to comment down below and I will try to respond to it. Um, or, you know, just reach out. You can send me an email. I'll also link that in the description. And yeah, I hope this helps. Um, thanks again for listening and for being here and supporting me. And it really means a lot. And I hope you learned something. Okay, I'll see you all in the next video. All right, bye.